Now, let's talk about the LA-2 leveling amplifier. The LA-2 is an optocompressor, meaning compression is actually controlled by a light panel installed inside a little box mounted to the back of the unit. And it's one of the most inspiring tools I've used so far, especially as a vocalist. Singing through it, it has the ability to make the voice sound bigger somehow, kind of adding an extra dimension. And while it adds some warmth to the signal, it, in terms of compression, it's really smooth and actually rather transparent. You can apply like 10 dB of gain reduction and you won't really notice or won't really hear the compression. Now the question is, how exactly does it do that? Extremely simplified, the LA2 consists of two major components, the gain reduction control circuit and the wonderful sounding tube amp or makeup tube gain stage. In between the both is a T4 opto cell. So a portion of the input signal coming straight from the input transformer is directly fed into the gain reduction control circuit, which in short decides how much gain reduction the T4 applies before the signal is getting forwarded to the makeup amp and from there to the output. In more detail it looks like this. A portion of the input signal is taken right from the input of the LA-2A going directly to the peak reduction pot. By turning up or down this knob we decide how much of the signal is actually being forwarded to the gain reduction control circuit. Next, that signal is being amplified by a 12AX7 tube before it hits the limiter response trim pot R37 and the stereo adjust trim pot R3, both mounted on the back of the unit. Okay now, so what does the limiter response pot actually do? R37 within a certain range controls which frequencies the gain reduction circuit actually sees and how it reacts to them. Let me draw a little diagram. With R37 in fully clockwise position, the compressor treats all frequencies of the signal equally, meaning the amount of compression applied is the same across the entire frequency spectrum. By turning R37 counterclockwise, the compressor starts to compress high frequency content of the program material more than the lower frequencies. To be precise, this only affects frequencies above 1 kHz and is increasing towards higher frequencies. So with R37 turned fully counterclockwise, the gain reduction circuit will apply like 15 dB more gain reduction to frequencies around 50 kHz than it does to frequencies below 1 kHz. This will kind of soften out the high end depending on the dynamics of the signal. The stereo adjust pot R3 controls the gain reduction control voltage supplied to the 6AQ5 tube. If turned fully clockwise, the gain reduction control voltage coming from the 12AQ7 is passed on straight to the 6AQ5 tube. On the other hand, that means if R3 is turned fully counterclockwise, the 6AQ5 won't see any control voltage at all, hence no compression, no matter how much you turn up the peak reduction knob. This is one of the most common mistakes I've seen from DIYers in the past building an LA-2A, having R3 set to fully counterclockwise from the get-go in one ring while there is no compression happening. But the stereo adjust part R3 wouldn't carry that name if it wasn't for a second purpose. It's directly connected to the output screw terminal on the back of the unit, which allows for interconnecting two LA-2As. More precisely, this allows for both the LA-2As to see the same gain reduction control voltage. And the R3 pots on both units are there to adjust the voltage applied to the 6 AQ5 tubes of both units until the compression is equal on both channels. I'll explain the matching procedure in more detail later. Now this 6 AQ5 tube supplies the necessary audio voltage to drive the electroluminescent panel in the T4B cell, which as mentioned before is actually responsible for the smooth compression character of the LE2A. And from there the signal is forwarded to the amp circuit and of course as a reference to the metering switch and the VU meter respectively. 